Hey everyone, I'm Ryan, you're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and in this video, I'm gonna start my next refinishing project. Uh, a while back, I did a series of videos refinishing my Mexican Strat here with nail polish and clear spray, and I think it turned out really great. And I think everyone had a lot of fun watching me do it. So I figured, why stop? I really enjoyed working with paint and doing something different. So I ordered a couple scrap bodies from Guitar Fetish. This is one of them. Uh, really rough condition. You know, paint's, paint's been buffed off here for whatever reason. There's dents and dings all over it. Uh, there's some crust right here. You know, this is not a body that anyone is gonna miss if I biff it up. So what am I gonna do? Uh, I cooked up an idea when I was working on this. I was working out some, uh, you know, some test samples with different materials that I was curious about. And what I ended up testing was gluing aluminum foil to a piece of wood and then I clear coated over it. And then I sprayed it with some clear like candy spray. And then for some reason I threw away that sample because <laughs> it was cluttering up my space. But I thought it turned out really, really great uh, when I did that test and I just put it in the back of my mind. I was like, man, this could be a lot of fun to wrap a guitar in foil. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. Um, part of the reason I came up with that idea is that there were these videos trending online where people were taking foil and they were balling it up and they were hitting it with hammers and then sanding it and polishing it and making these like perfectly smooth mirror metallic balls out of aluminum foil. It's like, if you can hammer and sand and polish aluminum foil to be shiny, maybe I could do that with just a thin layer glued to a guitar. So my plan here today is I'm not gonna do any prep on this guitar at all. I might knock down this little ding here just to get it smooth. Um, but I don't see any reason why I need to prep this because it's about to have a layer of foil over it. Uh, I'm gonna spray it with 3M Super 77. This is strong stuff. Uh, I'm gonna start with the sides first. I'm gonna do a wrap around the sides because if I just do the top over it, it's gonna split on the sides and then I'll you know, have to do fill in stuff. And I don't wanna do that. I wanna have the top wrap around the edge and kind, of and, and kind of connect seamlessly around the body. After the glue sets on this, I'm gonna give it a hit of this 2K stuff this clear spray, which is what I used on my margarita green strat here, the nail polish strat. And I love that stuff. It works out really great. And while I'm out in the shed, I might as well hit <laughs> that glary body that's been sitting out there drying after I hydro dipped it like a month ago. After the clear coat sets, I'm gonna get crazy. Uh, I got this Roth Rattle Bomb candy spray, a bunch of different colors of it. I'm gonna give it a candy coat. A spray paint. I'm gonna go for like a pinkish purplish sort of thing and then I'm not even done then I'll be right back. I'm gonna use these gold leafing pins to hand draw a paisley pattern over the candy and then <laughs> I'll do a burst ring around the edge of the guitar with more candy to give it that finished kind of like paisley burst sort of look and then <laughs> I'll give it another coat of clear to lock it in. And then, more and then, I'll marry the guitar, if it all turns out, with this Baguli aluminum neck that was sent to me. And then, of course, I'm gonna have to put together a pick guard with pickups and everything and make this guitar work. But I think that'll look really cool. Um, a metallic aluminum foil, finish with a candy burst and hand-drawn gold metallic paisley. I might change my plan along the way if things go sideways, but that's my plan right now. That's what uh, I've prepped to do with everything I've ordered. So now all I have to do is go do it. I'm gonna go set up outside to spray this thing with glue and start wrapping it. Uh, oh, also part of my plan with the foil is that I'm not gonna try to get it smooth from the get-go. I'm not even sure I'm gonna try to achieve a smooth look after, you know, 
polishing it and sanding it down or whatever, I still want it to look a little bit crumpled. So I'm gonna start out by crumpling the foil pretty dang good. I'm gonna establish like a consistent amount of crumpling. <laughs> All right, let's go open up the garage and get started. All right, next day, I had a lot of fun wrapping this. I got very, very, very sticky very quickly. Uh, something I figured out pretty quick is not to spray the guitar with the glue, to spray the back of the foil and then apply the foil. Spraying the guitar meant that there was glue on the guitar where there wasn't foil and I was getting it on my hands, it was getting everywhere. When I sprayed the back of the foil, then it was just on the foil. It would press out the edges a little bit, but it wasn't as sticky of a mess as when I started out just spraying the guitar. Um, I think it turned out really cool. It's got a really fun shine to it. Very metallic, very aluminum, obviously. Um, I am gonna sand this thing. Uh, I don't have a sandpaper here, but I'm gonna sand it down to, to sand down the bumps and take it more towards kind of a powdery, anodized sort of look. Uh, I might be able to polish it a little bit to get the shine back up, but uh, the point of this isn't for me to have this full glossy metallic look. I want it to look like metal, but I, you know, I want to even it out a little bit. Also, I don't want to deal with as many bumps when I put the clear coat over this. So, time to go sand this, and let's take a quick look at how it looks with the bagule. Bagule? He wouldn't tell me how to pronounce it. He's like, everyone pronounces it different, and I want to keep it a mystery. <laughs> I have a black pickguard here. I think that looks very handsome, as is right now. This could be a really fun option for someone looking to go for a full aluminum sort of look, or even just an aluminum body paired with a, uh, a regular neck. But I'm not going to stop here. After I sand this thing, I'm gonna clear coat it and then I'm gonna do the candy spray on it, like I said earlier. Mmm. All right, let's go sand it. All right, that was interesting. <laughs> As you can see, the sanding kind of distressed it a bit. There's parts where the foil flaked off, parts where it kind of like ribbon through, like a, it marbled through. I had a lot of gooey gray glue mixing with aluminum powder as I was sanding, and I cleaned a lot of that up with mineral spirits, um, which kind of contributed to some of these bigger areas opening up. Um, I wasn't intending to have perfection with this, and that's certainly not what I'm getting, but I am kind of excited about this almost like otherworldly 
alien metal meteorite sort of look I'm getting out of this. And remember, this is not gonna be the finished look. It's not meant to be a perfect aluminum chrome finish. I'm gonna cover this with a candy colored paint and then I'm gonna do hand-drawn paisley over it. So this, I think it's still gonna be a lot of fun to have this kind of random nature, this kind of distressed nature while still being really metallic in a way. I let it dry out there for a good three or four hours. I think I'm gonna go stick it in the shed and give it a clear coat now. And while I'm out there, I'm gonna put a little bit of clear on that glary that's been drying out there for a month and a half or so. And then finally I can wrap up that project at some point. I'm excited. I think this is gonna be fun. All right, I know there's a lot of little updates in this video. These have been drying in the shed for a good three hours. That spray stuff, the 2K sets up so quick. I'm really impressed with how easy it is to work with. I mean, it's supposed to be really dangerous stuff. Super duper dangerous. Uh, so I wore my mask. I was actually trying to hold my breath as much as possible and then go in and out of the shed between sprays. Um, just in case the mask wasn't even doing <laughs> your full amount of protection. Uh, that's how nervous I was about it. But um, I'm pretty excited about this. It's a little bit bumpy, but that's to be expected with what I'm doing here. I'm kind of thinking that I'll leave it bumpy. I was thinking about wet sanding it before applying the color. But then I had the thought, what if the color kind of like rests into little bumps and cracks in an interesting way that works with the crackle texture of the foil. That could be fun. So yeah, I think I'm gonna just, just spray it how it is, just spray color on it and see how it sets up. Um, I mean, this is, this is for the sake of fun. It's for experimentation, you know? Um, and discovery along the way. I don't know how exactly it's gonna turn out at the end. I'm not reproducing something I've done before. I'm just having fun and exploring an idea that I had. Also, I hit this, the glary that I hydro dipped a while back with some of the leftover extra clear. So it's locked in now. It's got a little bit of a shine to it. I didn't use a lot on it. I think if I had flooded it, with more clear than it would be a bit more glossy the way this uh, foil one is glossy. But I feel comfortable putting it back together now. Um, the raw spray paint that was on here was pretty gummy feeling. Where this has a much better kind of guitar feel to it even though it's still pretty bumpy and not really ideal. But I think I can put this guitar back together now and hand it off to the next person that wants to own it. All right, I'm gonna go hang this up in the shed I'm going to spray it with its first layer of color. I'm going to do a base coat of fuchsia. Then when that dries, I'll do the gold pen uh, paisley on here. And then I'll do some more fuchsia burst around the edge to kind of blend it back a bit. And then I've got beatnik purple from Rothflake that I'm going to do on the very edge and give it a fun like pink to purple sort of burst. All right, wish me luck.
here it is after the first coat of candy spray. That was a lot of fun. I, uh, this is my first experience messing around with candy paint. I used the Roth Rattle Bomb freaking fuchsia spray can here. It went on really light at first, but with each new layer, it got richer and richer and darker and darker. Um, you can see I didn't get a lot of coverage on the butt end of it, and it's a lighter pink there. But places where I got thick coverage, I got a little bit of banding that I'm not hugely stoked on. I was trying to do a little bit of a burst. I'm gonna end up doing a purple burst around the edge. I have a can of purple that I'm gonna do. Um, it also looks a little bit murky right now, maybe a lot bit murky, depending on which camera you're looking at. Um, it needs to have a clear coat over it for it to sparkle. Um, I'm gonna hit it with another can of this. I might need to order even more cans to get it layered up as thick as I want to give it a nice uh, smooth polish and shine. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use these gold leafing pens to hand draw Paisley onto this. <laughs> and after I'm satisfied with the hand drawn Paisley, then I'm gonna hit it with that purple burst, like I mentioned, then it's gonna be all clear coats and sanding from then on. So hopefully this all works. I didn't do any materials testing with these, with the clear coats, because once you use this clear coat, it sets in the can. Um, it's a chemical reaction. It's not an air drying thing. So hopefully this doesn't bleed like crazy, you know, once I put the clear coat on there. Hopefully it doesn't melt into uh, the candy finish either. I think it's like an oil-based pen. So, let's get into it. I think this is gonna obviously be a big time-lapse thing because I'm planning on spending at least an hour and a half, two hours doing this.
Well, I think I'm done. I think I'm finished working on this body. I could sand it again, spray it again, sand it, spray it, sand it, spray it, and keep going until I get a just glassy, perfectly smooth, no orange peel finish. You can tell just by looking at it, like it's got lumps and bumps across the clear coat. It is very, very, very far away from looking like a professional finish. But I really enjoy a lot of parts of this. Um, during the last sanding, when I was sanding down the clear coat, it bit through into the, uh, into the candy coat and revealed quite a bit of foil, but it kind of gives it a really fun, distressed kind of look. I'll put close-up photos of that so you guys can see. Quite a bit of orange peel, like I mentioned. Quite a bit of lumps and bumps. Um, this really suffers from my incompetence, <laughs> my impatience, my just all-around sloppiness and desire to experiment more than, you know, land perfect execution. Uh, there's a lot of places where there were bubbles and pitting in the clear, and I think that's because I was just holding the can too close and being kind of cheap and stingy with the clear. Um, I didn't want to waste very much of that $20 clear coat. <laughs> Each one of those cans is 20 bucks. Uh, after shipping, I think, or before shipping, they're expensive is what I'm saying. Something I'll say about this is I could have stopped at a few different points and been happy with this as an experiment. I'm glad I kept going and kept experimenting with each step as I planned it out, um, but I could have stopped at just the foil wrap and been like, man, this is a really cool look. Just give it a couple clear coats, sand it smooth, give it another clear coat for a shine, and it would have been really cool. I could have stopped after getting it its first coat of uh, the candy pink. That was a really cool look, the pink over foil. I could have stopped after you know, hand painting on all those paisleys. Also a really cool look, just the, the gold paisley over the pink. But I'm glad I went further. I'm glad I did the purple burst around the edges so I could learn what that's like for uh, future experiments. I'm glad I sanded it and achieved this kind of like distress into the foil to see what that's like. It's a process, you know? And uh, I feel very entertained by uh, this project. <laughs> what do you guys think? I wouldn't mind it if some builder out there or refinisher grabbed you know, one or two of my ideas out of this and did their interpretation of it, obviously with much better professional execution. You have my permission. It's not stealing, it's inspiration. Do it. Wrap a guitar in foil, hand do some paisley over it, give it some candy. I don't know. I have a feeling someone who really understands what they're doing could take this concept and do something really fun with it. Of course, if you're not a builder, if you're another amateur and you want to take a stab at it and you ever do anything like this, post pictures in the Facebook group. Tag us on Instagram. Do whatever you do. I just want to know about it. So next step for this guitar is I need to put a pick guard on it with pickups and figure all that out. I have a black strat pick guard here. I'm not sure I want to do a strat pickup loadout, but it's what I have. I have other pickup pick I have other pick guards around as well, and I have this beautiful aluminum neck from Baguli. Baguli? I think it's Baguli. Baguli necks. So I want to try this thing out. I think this is a perfect guitar for it with the aluminum foil connection. And it just looks really sharp on there. You can't deny that that looks good. Let's see if I can hold it together. <laughs> yeah, I think that'll be a really cool looking guitar. All right, guys, give me uh, some pickup ideas. I'm probably gonna grab out of, you know, 
my scrap box of pickups. But I have a lot of different stuff in there, so who knows, maybe you'll have an idea that uh, I can pursue. Uh, give me ideas for the next body. I've got one more here. I have green and yellow candy sprays as well. I kind of want to experiment with doing another sparkle coat. I've done sparkle coats over the years. The first one I did on my green margarita strap is back there somewhere. I think it's behind my head. There it is. <laughs> and I refinished that to the nail polish. Um, and then I did another glitter coat on this Fender Flying V, which I think turned out very well. I really leaned into trying to get it as smooth and, uh, you know, kind of factory finish close as I could. I gave it quite a bit of sanding and polishing to get it nice and mirror smooth. So I know that I can do that when I spend the time doing it. So maybe I want to take another stab at doing a clear coat with those new spray cans that I discovered, the 2K, um, because I did this with that triple thick Rust-Oleum stuff and it took forever to set. It was just kind of soft and gummy in my garage for close to a year before I felt good putting it back together. But that, that 2K stuff, it's a godsend for an impatient, sloppy, home hobbyist like me. I don't care that it's not nitro. I don't care that it's, you know, imperfect in a lot of ways, the way I spray it. Maybe I can learn to have a better technique with it, especially considering it kind of feels like I'm throwing money away when I'm just gooping it on there and sanding it away to get it smooth. I should just spray it correctly. Yeah, what do you guys think? You love it? You hate it? You think I should do more? Comments down below. Like, subscribe, just like, leave me rude and nasty comments like I already said. Um, support us on Patreon. Um, I fund various projects like this out of Patreon. Um, if I'm gonna be building something, I buy the parts and whatnot with Patreon money. And so that money helps me stay motivated and makes it possible for me to do fun experiments like this. In the end, $30 body, $100 in finishing materials, $130 body now. Thanks, Patreons. <laughs> All right. Stay grounded. Bye, everybody.